Hello, Section 8, OTP Tidbits. In this section, we'll wrap up our tour of OTP with a few tidbits. We'll start by learning a bit about two other important OTP behaviors, agents and tasks, and follow up with a different way of structuring projects with umbrella applications. Finally, we'll learn how we can package and release our software consistently with releases. And with that, let's move on with the first video, Agents and Tasks. In this video, We'll introduce two new OTP behaviors, agents and tasks, and we'll learn how to use them with code examples. On the previous videos, we've seen how the OTP concept of a gen server puts a nice layer of abstraction on top processes. This helps us build generic server processes without having to worry about the nitty-gritty details of managing the process in a correct fashion. However, there are times where even the gen server abstraction proves to be too much for what we're trying to achieve. Two of these cases are 1. When we only want a simple wrapper around a given state, only wanting to retrieve and update that state under a single process without having to implement specific gen server callbacks for such a simple case, and 2. For when we want to just do some asynchronous computation but don't want to manage the process state ourselves, and don't want to deal with gen server callbacks which are not tailored for a process with no interaction. And for these use cases, Elixir has us covered with its OTP toolset containing two new behaviors especially designed to cater for these, agents and tasks. An agent is a special OTP behavior that provides a thin wrapper on top of a process state. It allows the manipulation of its internal state via three functions mainly. Get, which retrieves the agent's state via transformation function. Update, which sets the new state and get and update, which combines the functionality of the get and update functions in one single call, retrieving the state and updating it at the same time. Let's see how agents work in Elixir. We can create agents using the start link function, as we do gen servers. Start link receives a single argument, which is a function responsible for calculating the initial state of the agent. Let's set the agent's initial state to an empty list. We can get the internal state of the agent at any time using the agent.get function. This function receives an anonymous function as its argument, and this function is responsible for transforming the state before it gets returned from the agent. Now, the agent module also provides a function for updating the agent's internal state, the update function. Update also receives a function that transforms the state, so it is stored in its transformed state by the agent. Let's insert an element in this list using this function and we can then retrieve the agent's state so we can see that the element was successfully added to the list. We can also showcase this transformation function by changing it a bit so that only the first element of the list is returned and upcased. Sometimes we also want the convenience of retrieving the state and also updating it at the same time. To this effect, Elixir provides a function named getAndUpdate. This function also receives an anonymous function as its second argument, but now it expects the return type to be a tuple. The first element of the tuple contains the returned value, while the second one is the new state to be stored by the agent. So let's return the first value in the agent's list and set the agent's state to an empty list. We can now take a look at the agent's state and see that the update worked as well. To terminate this agent at any time, we can use the agent.stop function and pass it the agent. And once the agent's process has been terminated, we can see that we can no longer use any function on it. Next up, we have tasks. Tasks provide a layer of abstraction on top of asynchronous computations spawned as processes. The task module provides various functions for working with tasks. Async, which launches a task process given an anonymous function, and await, which waits for the execution of a task and returns its result once it completes or times out. While we can create tasks via start link, like with gen servers and agents, the usual way of using them is via the task.async and await functions. Let's launch a task with task.async and pass a function that returns the string hello. Now we can get the task's return value by using the task.await function. And since the task will be complete, we'll get our result back immediately. If we try to retrieve the result again, however, the task will time out after 5 seconds. We can adjust this timeout by passing a second argument to task.await, which is the timeout in milliseconds.